a swingers cruise. Now we're not talking about this kind of swinger or that, even though, you know, she might be in the lifestyle, who knows. We're talking more about this and this. So the swingers cruise, the very name conjures up thoughts of a non-stop orgy on the high seas. Is it really like that? Well, let's take a look. The Bliss Cruise, sometimes called the Swingers Cruise, is a charter that is supported by quite a few different travel groups. I happen to book mine through Topless Travel. I'll leave a link below in the comment section. Uh, the cruise line chartered to host this event was Celebrity. You know, the one with X in their logo? Coincidence? I think not. Well, eh, maybe so. We'll look at the cost of this at the end of the video, so hang on. But first, let's take a look at what you're getting for your money. The ship itself is no different than what you would expect with any ordinary cruise. We were on the Celebrity Equinox, and it did not disappoint. Uh, the staff and the crew were very friendly, helpful, and accommodating. Uh, the food was excellent and plentiful. There was even a midnight cookie and milk time with entertainer Mark to go along with the pizza for the late night snack time. The Equinox has a ton of amenities, which comes as no surprise, you know, it's a fine cruise line. Uh, there were a few additional amenities provided for this particular trip that are not part of the regular fare. And that started with lots and lots of beds. There were many rooms available for extracurricular activity and many catering to different tastes, but more on that later. Patience. The Bliss Cruise is definitely designed for couples, though there were a few sponsored singles on the ship. Uh, you couldn't just go solo cruising on this one. Sorry, guys. Also, as you probably figured out, there were no children on board. Obviously, the majority of passengers were on the swinger side, but there was a good number of nudists thrown in as well. And like most cruises, all ages, races, body shapes, experience levels were represented there. And before you get scared, there's absolutely no requirement to participate in any of the extracurricular activities. And I mean any. The atmosphere was definitely sexy with people showing off their style and canvassing for that connection and whatever combination they were looking for. I personally didn't see any real high pressure sales, you know, so to speak, uh, or unappreciated advances, but you know, your mileage may vary. I don't know, I wasn't everywhere all at once. Uh, if they do happen, there's generally a host of people that are ready to step in and shut that stuff down. So no means no. If you have any negative experiences, Put them in the comments below. I will help you publicly shame them. Shame, shame. Overall, there were a lot of opportunities to meet new people as the ship bars and the social areas were heavily utilized. Or, if you so chose, you could just enjoy the sun in your birthday suit and leave all the socializing aside, or anywhere in between. A lot of people opted for the open table seating and dining so they could meet new people and share some food and a drink. Mm -hmm. There was a number of hot tubs and pools. There also were a social hotbed. And like all cruises, were major meeting areas for people to congregate during the day. Getting a seat was sometimes a little difficult by the pool. Strangely enough, nudity was very restricted on this uh, on this cruise, and you could only really be in the buff at the pool areas, hot tubs, and in the playrooms. Many people decorated their cabin doors with pictures and contact info. Uh, some had whiteboards, so you could leave a note or make some sort of meeting plans or just, you know, whatever, draw pretty cool little pictures, so. <laughs> Some were very original and funny. On the educational side, there were a lot of seminars, both free and paid, uh, that you could select from. And with such titles like All About Orgies, Lust Language, uh, Couple Speed Dating, Talk Dirty to Me, uh, and Knots Workshop, there was something there for everyone, you know? Education is priceless. There were plenty of hosted and unhosted meet and greets throughout the day with a huge number of combinations. You had single, LGBTQ+, hall pass, BDSM, older for younger, younger for older, uh, ladies only, pretty much any age group, interracial, Asian, and just to name a few. A lot, there's a lot. There was an activity sheet daily to showcase the times for the shows, games, and other activities like the playrooms. No, they were not 24-7. You machines, you. Mm. So you can uh, keep track and uh, not miss out on anything important. 
The ship stores also held some surprises as adult themed clothing and toys could be found in select shops, as well as on tables in the promenade. <laughs> Ooh. The shows were fabulous, but pretty much the same as you'd find on any cruise. They weren't like extra racy or anything. Uh, and strangely enough, there was a magician slash musician that kept things pretty funny as well as pretty saucy. Uh, the cruise had a lot of games, uh, contests, dancing through the day and night, and the topless travel entertainment guy Mark was great at stirring up interest for a little bit of risque fun. Uh, the Bliss Ambassadors, uh, they hosted a game night every evening uh, in a lounge and there was a lot of sexy fun to be had there, so don't miss that. Uh, my favorite game was one of like beer pong, but instead of alcohol at the other end, there were little cards that showed you kind of saucy things to be doing with the other team. Yeah, that was good, yeah. There were a number of theme nights that you could make as racy as you like. There were things such as Let's Get Laid, talking about Hawaiian lays, get it? Yeah. Uh, El Morto, Day of the Dead, Glow Night, uh, Prehistoric, just to name a few. A lot of fun to be had there. Now, well, let's get to the saucy bits. Warning, this is your last chance to bail out if you're underage, immature, easily offended, or will squirm for any reason during this next part. Feel free to find the door, no hard feelings. I believe there were no less than five very impressive playrooms. Most of these consisted of just many, many beds placed to fill a space. Uh, some had sheer curtains around them to give a, a little bit of semblance of privacy and others were just wide open to public view and there were some that were put together for epic group play as well um, with multiple mattresses placed end to end and side to side. And, you know, uh -huh. There was a play area on the forward weather decks in the basketball court uh, for some outside whoopee. And while this sounded like an amazing idea with the open sky, the stars, and the breeze coming across, in reality, it was, didn't work out quite like that. It had to be put off limits a few times due to inclement weather. And even on a good night, uh, 15 knots of that ship moving, it created a pretty good breeze. People wound up wrestling with, with, with the sheets blowing in the wind and, and, and not necessarily in a good way. The solarium area on the ship was open to everyone during the day. So you could come and use the beds however you like, huh? and then uh, you could actually take a dip naked or otherwise in the pool. However, in the evenings, this place was dedicated to couples only. This means you arrived as a couple and you left as a couple. There was no both of you going in and one going back to the room and leaving the other one behind. They actually kept you together. You had to check in and check out as a couple. So keep that in mind. This didn't seem to be a big problem though, as most people on board were couples. This layout gave the players the option of going for privacy, you know, by pulling the curtains or leaving everything open for all to enjoy, or maybe possibly join in. And yes, it's okay to look, but don't be a creep about it. All of the playrooms had Bliss staff on hand to change linens, direct traffic, and provide security. Uh, these were some of the hardest working people on the ship, uh, and there is not enough nice things to say about the job these guys did. Uh, there was a dungeon uh, for those that wanted to try out some BDSM type activities as well as some sensation play. Uh, this ranged from furnishings such as a Christopher Cross, uh, a swing, a spanking bench, you know, just uh, yeah, on and on and on. Uh, lots of tools and toys were available to, to view, to purchase, and to use. This was an interesting room as it had stadium style seating uh, all around the center stage. Mm. The people hosting the room were very friendly uh, and made it very easy to stick your feet or some other body part uh, into the water, so to speak. Um, it's also located close to the uh, casino so you could go out, play some slots, and then go out and play somewhere else. Uh, all in all, it was a bucket list type of trip with the ship and the Bliss personnel bending over backwards, doing everything in their power to ensure you had a good time. Uh, there were some clothing optional excursions offered uh, to experience, but they filled up pretty quickly. So you better strike early if you want to have a chance to do these, or you might be stuck just going out having fun with your clothes on. Cost wise, this trip was just about double what you would pay on a normal cruise on this ship. Uh, this is not a trivial increase in price, I get that, but what you get for it more than makes up for it in my opinion. For example, the cost for the different types of cabin, and this is all per person, uh, on the Bliss Cruise of April 2024, which was held on Royal Caribbean, was an interior stateroom went for $775, 
promenade view was 1125. Uh, ocean view went between 875 to 1275. Uh, and balcony was 1475 to 1625. Uh, you get up into the suites, uh, it was 2750 to 2950 for a junior suite and 3850 when you got up into the, the grand suite area. There were the two bedroom grand suites, 5850. Uh, the owner suite was 6250 and the royal suite was $11,750. So while this may not be for everyone, it is a good trip. Uh, if this interests you, you can do some browsing. You can try to find out about it. Uh, be careful though, because there is a Norwegian Bliss Cruise that you will find that is very vanilla and not to be confused with this Bliss Cruise. I'll put a link down below to make it a little less confusing. So nothing left to say, but happy cruising and don't forget the sunscreen for those white parts. <laughs>